Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com and in this video we are going to look at the aggregate function in Excel. Now the aggregate function was released with Excel 2010. I'm going to demonstrate this with Excel 2013 but just bear in mind that if you are using a version prior to 2010 you will not have the aggregate function. It was released in 2010 and the brilliance of this function is it will allow you to calculate aggregates like the sum, the count, the average, the max whilst ignoring specific criteria such as error values, hidden rows, subtotals and this makes it such a useful function especially the functionality to ignore error values that is probably the primary use of it. So that's my first demonstration here. I want to imagine that I wish to sum this list but ignore the error values that for whatever reason have occurred within this list. So I'll start up my aggregate function equals aggregate open in bracket and here it is. In its simple form which we want to look at here the first question is what aggregate would you like to perform and there's a list of 19 here with you know the primary ones being near the top I guess uh, there's sum at number 9 and that's my initial effort I want to sum this list so I'm going to press my tab key here to accept that or I could have just typed 9 so that's the index value of sum I'll put a comma in and the second question is what criteria do you want to ignore and here's your list of seven or eight really because you've got zero as one so my initial plan is to ignore error values only which is number six in the list but just check out some of the others there's the most intense one number three ignore hidden rows error values nested subtotal and other aggregate functions I just want number six for now. Comma. And then the next question is the first reference. I'm using the second list of arguments here. Where I can now start supplying references. And I'll just supply this range of cells here. With a closing bracket. And press enter to run. And it performs a total despite the error values being in that list. <clears throat> so that is the aggregate function. How useful is that? Okay, now let's have another look. Let's have one more look at it. I'll keep the error values, but I'm also going to hide some rows. I'm going to perform a filter, and I'm going to remove games cells from the list. So I have some hidden rows. And let's start that aggregate function again. Oh, you have to type it right. <laughs> Just to be a little different, this time I might go for a might go for a count, maybe. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and uh, which is number two, I'll put a comma, and this time I'm going for ignore hidden rows and error values. Number seven, ignore the error values and the hidden rows. And supply my range again. Now I can see the answer should be 3. And the answer is. I've got it formatted as £3 there. Because of the way it was set up. Let's please ignore that. But the answer is 3. So a really useful function. Uh, its primary benefit has to be ignoring error values. You know, Functions like subtotal. Uh, have been around before Excel 2010. Uh, and they can ignore hidden rows uh, and provide different aggregates like aggregate can here. So this is just finding that niche that wasn't possible uh, beforehand. Just throwing in one more here uh, to do an average. Probably a, a better example than before. And we'll get that average. And if I just select these cells, we can see what the average is at the bottom. 49.33 and my aggregate is performing it. So that is the aggregate function uh, from Excel 2010 onwards. Hope you find it useful. 
please check out some of our other tips and tricks at computergargard.com. <laughs>